Okay, so let's discuss now the strength design approach to double reinforced beams. But first, uh, let's try to enumerate the reasons why uh, we use double reinforced sections. So the there are five uh, reasons why we do it. The first one is on depth limitation so if uh, we have here a beam in which the depth is uh, limited due to aesthetic consideration supposing that I have here a beam that uh, is restricted to a total height or depth of uh, say 400 millimeter so I cannot add any more uh, an additional uh, height since this is already a limitation so my compression area uh, which is normally at the top fiber this is a positive bending beam uh, can I no longer uh, accommodate any additional height but rather I can only adjust the width no but since the beam is only effective when your uh, depth over width ratio is uh, limited to about 2.0, so I can only increase the compression strength by simply adding a reinforcement at the compression side. So these are now my uh, reinforcement, which are actually in compression okay so the number two reason is uh, I'm adding actually more strength and ductility because if I add the reinforcement to compression I'm giving also an additional uh, value on the compression couple letter C okay so C now will no longer be equal to to only the the uh, uh, of stress block uh, area or volume but rather it can be due to uh, C1 plus C2 no we're in C1 and C2 are the the compression uh, contribution of your concrete and C2 is the compression contribution of your reinforcement so another thing another reason is for reversal of moments no? so sometimes due to earthquake or due to lateral uh, uh, forces like wind and earthquake your compression side reverses in terms of its location sometimes it's at, at the top fiber sometimes it's at the bottom fiber no so due to that we need to add a reinforcement uh, uh, on both sides double reinforcement on both sides to anticipate such reversal of moments another thing is for torsional requirement if we want to to add up to the torsional capacity uh, which of course is not yet discussed here in this in this uh, concept of uh, flexure so we are actually uh, we can actually uh, give additional reinforcement at the compression side to balance the torsional requirement uh, it is uh, much easier to to balance it when you have uh, equal number of, uh, of uh, reinforcement both on the top and at the bottom okay so then just having a single reinforce uh, section another thing is on the construction detailing okay so if you have here a, a double reinforced beam it's uh, much more practical and easy to detail your stirrup uh, because if there are no reinforcement at the other side this stirrup uh, 
cannot be uh, placed uh, easily uh, during pouring. Uh, so the construction uh, methodology would be a little bit difficult on that part. Okay. So uh, normally these are the five uh, common reasons why we consider reinforcing your beam uh, both in the compression and the tension side so you call that a double reinforced section so the compression is at the tension both at the tension and the compression okay tension and compression side Okay, so uh, so for the analysis, uh, you can see now that the tension and the compression reinforcement are located on opposite sides. So if this is a positive bending of beam, okay, so the beam bends positively. This is a positive bending. Your top fiber are in compression. Okay. and your bottom fiber is in tension so this is now the tension uh, side so this is the neutral axis okay so your your enforcement uh, tension is uh, is actually labeled as as prime okay so notice that now your your situation is that uh, we assume your AS to be divided into two AS. No? Okay, so it's actually equal to AS1 and AS2, where your AS1 is actually balanced by uh, the compression block that we are normally using in the in the single reinforced analysis. And AS2 is balanced by the additional reinforcement brought about by the steel area in compression. Okay, 